right, so today we are going to add the new box to our wreaths. Uh, quite a few weeks later than I anticipated, but it's okay. Um, so we're gonna do that. I'm gonna record that. We might work in the garden some. We've got most of our beds ready to plant. We're just kind of waiting. Uh, might direct sow some stuff today. I haven't decided, but welcome to Duke's Yard Homestead. This is Kelsey, and I'm looking forward to sharing with you today. I just got the second 10 frame deep onto the orange hive, which was the nuke that someone gave us last year for Miss Warm. Everything's looking good. I didn't go too deep in the hives, um, but I need to, but there's some more things I need to do, but I just, today I really wanted to add that second deep onto there. I need to open up the other hives too, and I still got to move the swarm over but I'm gonna get a new place set up for the bees um, I want to move them back into the back property back over there up off from right here um, and so I got to get that place prepared I also um, got to finish building the honey supers I have the honey supers for the orange hive blue hive till hive <laughs> we got multicolored hives going um, but I got to build them for the eight frames um, I do not have those yet and so I'll get those done in the next little bit, but we got it there. Oh, I'm a little nervous, a little excited. <laughs> uh, ever since the bee stings, I have uh, been very nervous about the bees. Um, and so each time I'm getting more confident uh, and that's a good thing. I uh, still get nervous, uh, still get still get excited. So, um, but I'm super happy about having that second frame on. And hopefully they'll be happy with that second deep as well. Um, I can definitely tell that I made it versus bought it. Um, and there's a little bit of a gap on each side uh, from the from the one I made, but it'll be okay. They'll fill that in, and if I need to, uh, you know, address those issues when it gets cold. But uh, for the first deep frame built by myself, uh, Jeffrey helped me too. I will say that's a pretty daggone good deal. It's always a learning process. I probably can slide it over a little bit more too. Um, but as I was putting the top on, there was bees already checking out that top. I will eventually come out and open up this green yellow hive. Um, I would like to wait until I get my honey supers ready so I could do the all in one go. But everybody, thinks, everybody seems healthy. Um, I'm not sure if this swarm stink, this is the swarm we caught and brought back. It doesn't seem too, too healthy of a hive. There are some bees going, coming and going from it, but not a lot. So I do need to open that and see what that's, what's going on with there. And got plans to build them a box. I think I want to go with a horizontal hive. Uh, so they have time in there for right now. Got a little bit of time to figure that out, but I've been looking into the horizontal hives and uh, that might be the route I go. We'll, we'll see. So now that we have got the bees taken care of, I'm uh, going to check the greenhouse. And my allergies are a little crazy, so that's why I sound like this and why I'm sniffling. But we're going to see how everything's going there, and then we might plant some stuff out. I'm really glad to be done with the bees for right now. Um, still got a lot of work to do, obviously. There's always going to be work to do. But bees, check. Garden, about to be check. Greenhouse, about to be checked. And then I gotta feed these guys because they're uh, they're getting impatient with me. All right, so we're gonna go out to the greenhouse. As you can tell, I need to <laughs> I need to eat eat. But uh, so our first stuff that we started back in February just kind of ain't doing that great. But all of our other stuff that we started is. So the only thing that's really doing great from February is our lemongrass, and I've got to repot that, but uh, we got peppers coming up, we got herbs coming up, lots and lots of tomatoes. So 
I'm pretty pleased with that. But before I leave this area, I got to show you. I keep talking about a field of purple. And that is what happens. Uh, back here in the back, um, all these purple irises just come up every year. And last year I moved a lot. I've moved a whole bunch to the front yard. Um, but they're coming up everywhere. And I love it because it's just beautiful. And these guys right here are like up to my chest. So they're like four and a half foot tall. It's pretty wild. And we talked about how we amended our beds and stuff. I'm not going to get anything out today just because I need to take a break. But um, these are some of the white patty pan squash that came up from last year. Um, and I'm in the process. I'm going to spread them out. I'm going to give some away. I'm so looking forward to the patty pan squash again. Our basil's doing good. That's not basil. I'm sorry. That's our oregano. Oregano's doing good. Um, I've got to finish cleaning out this bed over here, but our bee balm is doing excellent. This is where I'm going to put the lemongrass. I have some renegade potatoes coming up. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, we got to plan out where we're going to put everything. Um, I usually do a crop rotation. This year, I am going to do squash in the same place just because... That's where those come up. Um, and we'll do our cucumbers over there. But yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And our clematis is coming back. I'm trying to train her so she doesn't get all out of whack. And a few months will be completely, the arch will be completely covered. And it'll be white flowers all over. It'll look like it snowed. Now that we've got that stuff done, I am going to go get the feed out of the car. I have not been able to feed the chickens today, except for their scratch grains. Uh, usually I get feed from a local place, but this week I had to run to tractor supply. So um, hopefully over the weekend I'll have some time to go out and pick up my monthly supply. And you can definitely tell that the chickens haven't been fed today. They are very upset with me. So this is how I move my feed. Got a little cart, put it on it, drag it to the bag. I store it in black trash bags, trash cans. I'll get them, these guys fed and they'll be pretty happy with us. They might follow us to the front yard. A lot of times they do that when I'm walking back and forth. We'll see. And speaking of the front yard, I've got quite a bit of weeding and stuff I need to do up here, but I have different types of columbines coming back up. I have the irises from the back. And then I also have purple, blue, and white irises blooming up here. And then this tree, I have no clue what kind of tree that is. But when I got here, <laughs> it was a lot bigger and most of it was dead. So I cut it all back and this is the first year that's blooming. And most of the stuff in the yard, there's a, there's a few exceptions that I bought. Um, I have transplanted from other places, other people's homes that have shared with me. And a lot of it came from my grandparents' yard out at their farm about three miles from here when, um, when my granddaddy passed. One of the things my grandma wanted was some of the flowers when she moved. And so we got a lot of the bulbs and stuff that we could. And I brought them here. And that's what the white and the purple are. Uh, same with some of the stuff up here. And again, I got the weed. I've left the leaves. I leave the leaves every year and then just add to it. Um, I got some art everywhere. I got a butterfly bush and a flying pig. But um, I'm excited that each year that this stuff keeps coming back and it's a little piece of what my life used to be here on uh, the, the life I'm building. So uh, that's always a good thing. And if you think that you can't take something from where you used to be, think about the flowers, see if there's bulbs that you can pull up and relocate. And this is a prickly pear cactus. My friend Janelle, she gardens too, gave me a piece of it. And um, this little guy's starting to bloom. So we're, we got some extra, some new growth coming. Hopefully that'll take off in that pot as well. So got lots of stuff in. We have a lot of renegade longleaf pines too. <laughs>
Oh, so you got to see the front yard. It's very, very off, not very often I show the front yard, but I absolutely love all the stuff that's in bloom. Uh, I have a couple of rose bushes in bloom as well. Um, so I just wanted to take the time to show you that while I was moving the chicken feet. This rose bush right here was the only thing that was in the yard when I moved here. Uh, most of the landscaping and things like that had not been kept up with. My dad was really sick. And at one point the yard was gorgeous, but uh, as his health declined, the, the yard kind of declined. And right now I've got to come in and I've got to cut all this. The green, your light green you're seeing is a uh, wisteria. I had a wisteria tree cut down and I say tree, it was you know three foot wide uh, at the base cut down and it has taken starting to take over this bush and if you don't know about wisteria wisteria is an invasive species and it can grow really fast in certain climates and i happen to live in the perfect climate for it to grow on everything um and take over everything so this is my little rose garden got the original rose bush here uh, and i have two others and the pink one's doing really well over there too So like I was saying is I keep my scratch greens and my feed in these big plastic containers. I use a pitcher <laughs> and get their feed out. And I fill it about most of the way. And I have already given them scratch greens today, so I don't need to do that. But yeah, I have found that this works for me. Keeps the bugs out. Keeps me a little bit more organized. I've been using these bins for about three years now. Uh, I had people say, well, aren't rodents gonna get into it? That sort of thing. I have not had that issue yet. And so we're gonna take these guys their food. They're probably excited. They're already excited about their scratch grains earlier. What you think, Baby Barber? Miss Kermit, you want some? This is how you know you have spoiled your chickens. And this is the the trough feeder that I made them <laughs> with just stuff around the yard and um, I really like it and they really like it. We have had a lot less waste since building this and it's worked. For the purple coop I do the same thing. Um, they do not have one of the trough feeders yet. They just have their regular old feeder. Eventually I will make them a trough feeder out here but I do three quarters pellets, a quarter scratch grains, so I mix it into their thing. We're gonna see how they're doing. It seems like everybody's doing fine. Put, the, put this down. These two girls in the front, the black one and the barred rock looking one, they are two that I hatched from that olive egger hatched back in January. And then we have some white leg horns and some Easter eggers running around. All right, so we got everything done that we need to get done and now I have to go back in and do some work. <laughs> um, I'm hoping to get a few things done each day here on the homestead and we got our plans for today checked off. Um, things will keep picking up as it keeps getting warmer. Uh, we are past our frost date now. So that means that we will be planting soon. I just I always hold off a little bit uh, because you never know what the weather's gonna do in Eastern North Carolina. So yeah, but thanks for joining me today. Thanks for hanging out. 
and I look forward to seeing you next time. All right, so I took a break from earlier, uh, working with the bees and doing a few other things, and I've decided that I'm gonna take a risk, <laughs> and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to direct sew some of the stuff that I like to direct sew. So what is that? Uh, I've got boards, I got my Market More cucumbers, I've got my cucumelons, I'm gonna throw in some Kushaw squash, my early regular squash. I'm gonna get my ochre going and put some zucchini in and some yellow scallop squash in. Uh, the squash that are out there are white scalloped. Let's see, what else do I got? Sorry. <laughs> and oh, a whole bunch of zinnias. I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle them in. I really like putting them throughout the garden, uh, not just in one place. I do usually put some in just one place, but um, I like seeing that color throughout the garden. So I'm gonna go out and do that and I'll try to record while I'm doing so. So I went ahead and direct started, or directly sewed, <laughs> uh, some cucumbers, squash, zucchini, loofah, cucumbers. Might have already said that one. And a lot of zinnias out into the garden and I'm getting them watered in. I also put out some fertilizer. And after this I'm going to go cook dinner and I'm really not going to do anything else out here today. But I'm super excited. So this first whole bed is planted. Um, I will add in probably a few more things as we go. Um, the goal here is to grow cucumbers up across the trellis and then maybe I'll have some space in the front of this to put um, maybe some tomatoes or something like that. And I also got an okra. We've got an okra bed going over there. And so it's a beautiful day here in Eastern North Carolina. I'm so glad that I've been able to get a few things done. And now I'm going to get this watered in and call it a day. Thank you. 